Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the SoftKey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2 CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 12, and these are the games our dig team has dug up. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. First up we have a three-man team dig. Christopher Wagel, Scott Percival, and Martin Hirschberg have all dug up DOS games backslash adventure backslash evil crip one. Well, let's see if it was actually worth the effort or not. So given that three people decided to dig this one up, hopefully it's something decent. But we're gonna find out. Um I think I'm actually gonna run the executable because those batch files don't look like anything important. Evil Crypt by Kurt Keisler, 1985. So this is actually a pretty old game. Evil Crypt by Kurt Keisler, want instructions? Yes. Interesting. So it looks like we've got a whole bunch of different things in this game here. Um, you are Willie the Wizard. The evil lord has taken your spell book to use against the good. <laughs> not, not good or good people, just the good. <laughs> He's put you in his evil crypt. You must escape and save the world. Use the arrow keys to travel through the crypt. Hit enter. Okay. Oh, it already put me in. Um. Okay. It said use the arrow keys. I wonder if I can use the numeric keypad. Okay, can't move diagonally, but I can use the numeric keypad. Oh, that's a... Treeman that's beat me to a pulp and apparently killed me. Okay. So, avoid bad things. Got it. Ah! That just sort of came out of nowhere. Well, first of all, well, let me t just take a look here. We got an arrow, bow, chest, door, fence, key, potion, rock, stairs, sword, tree, wall. So I'm guessing those are the things that are okay. Deadly enemies or anything with the cyan color. Deadly items, anything with the magenta color. How are gravestones deadly? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, so first of all, this tiny view space. Hey, how are you supposed to know where you're going? Well, it looks like this is not a small map. Jeez. You can't see ahead of you while you're moving around. I got a lot of those dangerous gravestones there. Oh, found something. This potion will allow you to levitate over pits. Well, that, is that a pit? Can I levitate over this pit? Myth death and- but I got the levit- Urgh. The thing is, the only- the only ins the controls that are given here are the arrow keys, so... Mm. I don't know. This limited view thing is extremely annoying. Okay, so I don't think the maps are too big, because I just found the levitation potion again. Okay, here's the staircase. Oh, let's see if I can actually figure out how to levitate over this thing. Um, interesting, you actually have like an actual time limit, because that's going down even without me moving. Okay, the enemies are moving. <laughs> that's good to know. Okay, that's good. I can actually turn the levitation on and off at will. Ooh, I now have the magic chest. I have absolutely no idea what that does for me. Ooh, I found another staircase. So it looks like I'm making progress here. It is so hard to figure out where you're going, though. Just with that tiny view there. When I'm, whenever I'm walking into an area that I'm not familiar with, I have to be really careful. Like, if something pops up in front of me, I have to stop moving. Otherwise, I'm liable to run right into it. Oh, I think I found the sword. I just gotta figure out how to get around to it now. Hello, sword. Found the magic swords. Can I actually kill stuff now? That's kind of important to know. Nope, you still can't kill things, even though you've got a sword. That is dumb. <laughs> okay, so... That was Evil Crypt by Kurt Keisler. 
This game actually has a lot of interesting stuff to it, but that tiny view just kills it, really. Like, I mean, you can't see where you're going half the time. And then the other half of the time, it's like you're running into things because of the fact that you only have like a single frame to be able to see things before you accidentally walk into them. And then, come on, I picked up a sword and it won't let me kill a poisonous snake. Seriously? Uh, nah. This game has a lot of interesting ideas to it, but that tiny view is the big killer. Next up, Anton Panetta has dug up DOS games backslash arcade 2 backslash rimshot. There's a number of things this could be. Um, but apparently we only got the one executable, so rimshots. Go from rim to rim as quickly and as many times as possible for highest score. The faster you travel, the quicker you can shoot, the more accurate your shot, the more faster your travel craft. You get two shots to build your craft. A 10 and a 20 gets you a slow parish. Man, I really don't understand what's going on here. Um, space will at cannon range to fire. Cannon won't fire without it. There's so many stipulations here. Like the most complicated rules I've ever read for something that's probably even not even a fraction as complicated as that. In any case, the person we have to blame for this game is David Death De Deathlefs. Death left. That's that's what we're going with. Death left. I really can't pronounce that. <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> um, and in 1992, and made in Pascal. Guy wants fifty dollars for the source code, but free for personal use. So that's not bad. Okay. Interesting. So, okay, so I'm controlling this thing over here. Uh, why can I not go up the ladder? I could go down the ladder. So is this like a two? No, it can't be, because there's only one score. Okay, so... You only have three angles you can adjust to using the one, two, and three keys. How do you play this? Okay, I'm gonna have to read those instructions again because I couldn't- I can't figure out the controls. Okay, so apparently the down arrow is what I'm missing here. So... Okay. So, now what? Did I put it in? Oh, I did. Okay. So, now I have this thing over my head. Um... This is weird. So am I, like, building... things? I li really don't have any idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah, this seems like... A... I mean, it's an interesting looking game. Because it definitely doesn't look like your typical game, but... The gameplay is just... It's almost like a puzzle game, as opposed to any sort of scoring game, but... The puzzle just comes down to knowing which of these charges, and combined with which cannon angle, gets which point values, and then that somehow combines to make, like, like kites or something that you float down on, or gliders, or... Let's put it this way, this game is an interesting experiment in making a game, but it's kind of hard to call this, like, something you would play for more than just a few minutes. I mean, I guess you could if you really wanted to, but it's still an interesting thing, even though it's there's really not much to do here. Our last game for today is DOS Games backslash Arcade backslash Foyer, which was dug up by Robert Mackey. I think I actually know what this is. Um, I'm not remembering this right. Now we got a number of files here. Let's go foyer.exe. Welcome to f, f u what? What is your name? My name is me. 
okay, this is definitely not what I thought it was. <laughs> so... Abandoned Hope Wretched Traveler, main entrance. So it's definitely a 3D maze game of some kind. It's dark in here. So I guess I shouldn't go that way yet. What is it with what is it with finding nothing but maze games today? <laughs> or games that you can't know what you're doing. Well actually, let's use an item. What's this Luxicon? Lamp is on? Oh, so it's like a lamp to let me see in dark places? Let's see if that works. Uh It doesn't work. Okay then. Maybe I need like lamp oil or something. I'm actually hearing things. Like maybe there's like enemies or something. Once again, I find myself lost because there's no map in this game. Of course. Oh, hello, I found something. Open box. A rhodium coin. What the hell am I gonna do with a rhodium coin? I guess I can throw it at something if I'm really desperate. Yeah, this maze is ridiculous. It's huge! Now I have a silver coin. So I have a rhodium coin and a silver coin. And another silver coin. Come on, give me like a sword or something. Ah, so many silver coins. Seriously, who puts this box on the floor and just puts nothing but a silver coin in it? <laughs> Okay, this is weird. Take a look at how everything shifts a single pixel here. It's almost like certain drawing effects are actually altering how the rest of the scene draws. You know, the funny thing is, I can actually tell you guys why that's even happening. Certain programming languages have a pen feature. So instead of actually like specifying lines by coordinates, you turn the pen on, and then you simply list the coordinates to draw lines between. And that's probably what's going on here, is that one of the commands, I think for the one for the left, having a door on the left side there, I think that one is actually causing the pen position to rest in the wrong spot. And that's affecting the rest of the drawing of the scene. Best guess. It actually says ouch on screen for a split second whenever I hit a wall, like... <laughs> that took a while. And I keep hearing these strange sound effects, but I haven't actually seen anything yet. So many coins. Like, give me a map or something. That'd be a hell of a lot more useful than all of these coins. And here's the irony, is that eventually I'm going to find so many coins that my inventory's going to fill up. Or, wait. Firks Vendor. Insert coin. Hmm... Product, specials, advice, pamphlets? What? This suddenly got really weird. <laughs> uh, product? Pit cover, Ichronoclast, Luxicon. No selection. Let's see what else we got. Specials. So I'm guessing these are the things I can buy. So there is a map, apparently, which costs one rhodium coin. But it's not available right now. Well, I just got a yellow book. Noob one. <laughs> Working shift regular. What? So the iconoclast is like some sort of watch? Sort of? Weird. Let's read the books. Oh, it actually brings us in the text mode. So this is interesting. Like, I mean... Being a 3D maze game without a map to reference, well, at least not without buying it somehow, does make it a bit annoying. Especially with a map this big. But at the same time, though, it's interesting that it... That I actually found my way back to the main entrance. 
I have no idea how I did that. <laughs> so yeah, it's an interesting game for sure. Playable? Uh, it's debatable. Like, I mean, there's so it's so different from the typical game. And here's the other thing, too, is I haven't really found anything yet, aside from boxes and coins and a vending machine. But the vending machine was what made this thing interesting. It's like, you don't expect to see that when you're playing a maze game. You don't expect vending machines. So, I don't know. I guess it really depends on how old this game is. If this is like a really old game, then yeah, this would be something really interesting for the time. But if this is like a game made in the early 90s by somebody just fooling around, then they could have done a better job then. Oh, I've actually found something. And it actually took stuff, something. It took my blue book. And now it's still trying to take stuff of mine. Okay, so I'm dead as a doornail now. That was interesting. So that's basically this game is in a nutshell. It's interesting. <laughs> that's all I could really say about it. But, well. Let's put it this way, I've played worse maze games, but this is definitely a very weird one. <laughs>